And welcome! It is Friday, which means it's time for the paint and say, I am VMuse. And here with me, I have a lot of people above. <laughs> Today, we have our special guest, Mark Muir, joining us. Hello. Hi, Mark. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thanks for painting with us. So, and we also have, of course, Lauren is always with me. So, we're very excited to get started on painting. Um, but before... almost always, almost always. Almost I, always. I sadly had to miss when we had Tanya on, which <laughs> Dunk. I really wanted to paint with her, but at least I get to paint mm. with Mark, so I'm happy. There we go. See, mm. it's still good. It's still all good. But yes, along with Mark, we have Brother Uriah now in game. What else do we have to look forward to for in game stuff, Lauren? Well, along with the blushing groom Uriah, you can also pick up the blushing bride Nahara. So if you'd like to have the the whole set for the top of your cake, then you're all set. <laughs> um, we are in the first weekend of the event, so you still have plenty of time to unlock Brother Eye and get everybody from the Black Dice Society in your game. Also, the weekend has started, so the weekend uh, promos have begun, which, there we go. I'm glad that you put that up on the screen because I could not remember it offhand. <laughs> It is aptly titled The Wedding Bells Weekend, and mm. that should help you with all of your unlocking of Brother Uriah needs. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to have some fun today, folks. WizKids has sent us the um, limited edition, mind you, Giant Space Hamster Paint Kit. So we're going to be painting this today and next week. Um, basically, the naming of this cracks me up because it's a miniature Giant Space hamster so yeah essentially we're painting boo for the next couple of weeks folks so this is going to be fun um this is something where if you want to get a hold of the kit definitely go to your flgs um for those not knowing what flgs is it's friendly local game store um and see if they have these on hand if for some reason your game store does not you can always go to dndmini.com and check out and see if you can order it there and thanks to WizKids, kids we do have a code for february it is Slay and save Feb. <laughs> Not February, but Feb. Um, so you can use that for 10% off your purchase of your entire order, not just of the kit itself, but everything else you might want to put into your cart, whether it's unpainted miniatures, painted miniatures, gear, that type of stuff. Um, so just a I mean, buy the there. giant Tarask. You know you want it. You want that Tarask. You absolutely mm -hmm. want that Tarask. Have you seen that Tarask? That Tarask is sweet. Pretty good. I actually yeah. saw that Tarask in person at Mox the last time I was there. Mm -hmm. And I did ask how much it was because they didn't have a price on it, which is probably smart. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I did think about it. But if I'm going to go ahead and get one of those massive unpainted minis, I'm going for Tiamat. You're Tiamat. You're going, yep, mm -hmm. there you go. There you go. So if you're not familiar with these paint kits, it is basically a one and done purchase. It has your paints. It has paint brushes. It has a little water cup. It has the mini itself. And there are the options of instructions on the side going through a QR code to a link to Den of Imagination's tutorial video, which if you want to check that out, cool. However, you get the joy of sitting with us watching how we're going to paint this together and hearing what Lauren and Mark and I get to chat about at the same time. So, I mean, I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> the other cool thing is when you get this kit and you take everything out, the blister packet actually turns into a paint palette so you can use this for mixing paints you can use this to like put a little extra water in here for if you want to have one as rinsing water and one as your uh, mixing water you have all of that going on so yeah save the blister and you can see like it has these wells you can make lots of use out of and in the kit itself you'll get a fine detail brush as well as a multi-purpose brush however um, we all are experienced mini painters at this point so we're going to be grabbing the brushes that work best for what we'd like to do um, but you can basically paint everything as needed using everything you have in that kit 
So that being said, we're gonna have some fun and we're gonna paint up Boo. I'm, I'm gonna call it Boo, forget it. I'm gonna paint Boo over <laughs> here. We're gonna make it look like this cutie pie sitting right over here. Uh, so to get started, what we want is Earth Brown. Earth which is Earth Brown. Earth. I'm gonna Earth. There was one thing I forgot to say, which is we do have Sean as our moderator Ooh, hello, for Sean. our our show for today. So if you do have any questions about mini painting, about mm -hmm. Idle Champions, uh, go ahead and put those in the chat with question in big capital letters so that Sean can grab it and put it into a little backstage document so that I don't there miss it go. while I'm desperately trying to go for Boo's eyes. There, go for the I said eyes. the joke. Go for the eyes. I've, gone, I've done the joke. <laughs> I promise to not do Get the joke out. again. Yeah, there or you if you have any questions about space hamsters Absolutely. in general, I'm something of a space hamster expert. Uh, because of course, there is a Mass Effect connection. I, I for those I... who don't know, I, yeah, well, thank you. Thanks for flying the colors. Uh, I, of course, do the voice of Commander Shepard, one of the Commander Shepherds in the Mass Effect trilogy. And yes, Commander Shepard does have a space hamster. I, I, I would it. point out that, you know, Boo is a miniature giant space hamster, but this is a giant space hamster miniature. Mm -hmm. Yes. And one of these days, we will one. have an actual mini of Boo, which means we mm -hmm. will have a miniature, miniature giant space hamster. Yeah, we're going to build on that one. I think we do. One. Doesn't the Minsk uh, mini, I think the Minsk mini has like a teeny hamster. I think it has like a it. little, little one on the shoulder mm -hmm. type of situation. So I'm actually thinning yeah. out uh, Earth to be a thinner, like a maple syrup consistency. Um, so you want to use clean water for that because the fur has some great texture and you don't want to go in fully thick paint because otherwise it's just gonna hover over the details of the fur and then harden up and you'll lose that fur detail. Um, so you want to get that thinned out and it's just gonna make it so the paint flows a little bit better onto the surface of the miniature. I'm showing you right here on my wrist. So you can see the texture is still still showing through, um, but the paint goes over quite smoothly, which is what you want to aim for. Now, what we're gonna do is sort of start with painting a little mask onto the face of the hamster mimicking what we see here. So we're gonna basically start going over the nose with a, I'm gonna use this one, a round number one. So I'm gonna go over the nose and then, come on, autofocus. Playing with autofocus today too, just for funsies. Come on, there we go. Paint over the nose and kind of do a little kick up towards the eye and then droop it down around and get this fun little mask look going on the face of the right. hamster. Are you painting over the nose itself? Yep, and we'll painting hit that over the nose itself. Yeah, we'll hit that afterwards for better details. I'm debating if I want to keep this autofocus on. This is why, yeah. It's one of those where it worked up until It worked until we I have to start moving. Well, no, it's because my hand keeps moving, so it can't lock and load. Uh, yeah, so let me just quickly toggle that back to changing that out. One moment, please. Uh, meanwhile, cool. Sean wants Sean Q wants to know: Are those minis resin printed or PLA printed? Um, uh, these are from WizKids. They are resin mold, uh, yeah. resin poured, I should say. Um, so it is not not something that comes off of a three D printer. You can actually. Um, you look carefully where's one of, well let me get the focus fix first that one thing might, at a time yeah uh question are you uh going over the eyes themselves yep I know because be it'll be things. yeah we'll black those out later but it'll just be easier to add the black than trying to paint finely around that area that's good because i was just trying to go around the eyes and it was more difficult than I was anticipating. Yeah, no, no, no. I always try and get it so that the details kind of, the finer details will go back in and put as we need than trying to get really fine detail work as you're just putting on base colors because that becomes a stressful point uh, in capturing that. So, but yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of shows and where V and I are both just incredibly quiet as we're trying to do tiny little fine detail work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, sorry, sorry, there's just no chatting going on right now because um, dots are happening. Mm-hmm. We like oh, the and dots. A, and a, apparently everybody is excited about uh, Mark having you say things as Commander Shepard oh, about oh. D&D <laughs> stuff. <laughs> oh, boy. This will be fun. 
This is my favorite space hamster on the Citadel. There you go. Yeah. Let's see. I love it. I love it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Timnos points out that uh, Commander Shepard does also have miniatures of their own because you can uh, collect all these spaceship miniatures. This Ooh. is true. I had totally forgotten about that. But... See, now I, I kind of want to get a mini of the Normandy and try <laughs> painting something outside of the D&D &D realm. <gasps> oh, that would be fun. <laughs> I highly uh, and recommend of course, it. There's also, you know, Commander Shepard doesn't, doesn't just have a hamster. He also has fish. Or uh, I should say they also have fish. Yeah. Because Shepard can be male or female, played by my, me if male. Uh, Jennifer Hale, of course, is the other fe uh, Commander Shepard. Mm -hmm. Amazing lady. Sorry, I'm just I'm watching where you're putting the mask. and. Are you hitting the... The, the inside of the ears as well? Or... Yep. See, that's what I have for the ears right now. Aww. Already, I'm totally enamored with this little face. It's too cute. I was saying before the show how happy I am that the actual mini doesn't look nearly as scared as the art does on the box. Because <laughs> we, we've got the art down there, and that miniature or that giant space hamster looks, in my view, terrified. I don't know what it's looking at, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff in in there space is. that can make make things terrified uh-huh absolutely so mark i know you paint minis i do so what's been your latest paint uh this one aside uh my latest paint would have been uh for at dnd in a castle and it was mostly uh repair jobs because <laughs> oh no uh, i took i took a bunch of minis many of whom have been uh painted by my friend courtney uh who's mm -hmm. figur figuratively speaking minis on Instagram, oh, fun. and uh, despite my taking great care and bubble wrap and many things, there were there was some damage. So I was oh, I was no. doing lots of frantic repair work uh, back in October. Well, well besides the repair work, what's what's the latest calm mini that you've had a chance to paint? What is the latest one? Uh, it was an ogre, actually. Ooh. Ooh, just for fun or for a specific campaign? This one was just for fun. And actually, uh, a lot of my campaign work, again, I've found that uh, I don't quite have, have as much time on my hands as I did during uh, the height of our of our recent pandemic. Uh, so often I'm finding myself just going, Courtney, could you get these painted up for me for a campaign that I've got right away? And oh, well, Courtney that's cool. is amazing. So, Yeah, I see, because um, you post a lot of it on Instagram and they do great work. It's always fun to see what they've painted up for you. Yeah, she uh, she is amazing, and uh, I highly encourage people to follow. There if you, you want to see some well well painted minis. Mm -hmm. Have there been any minis that you have needed to pass along, but then afterwards felt bad because like, oh, I really want to do the wings on that dragon or something that was <laughs> you were really looking forward to, but then time. Well, uh, on it's usually just after I've passed them off, but then when they come back and she's done such an amazing job, it's just like, yeah, I, I wouldn't have done this as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I am more than happy to accept hers. So how did you find Courtney then? Uh, let's see. We had a mutual friend, uh, a friend of mine who is also an actor, and uh, put just put us in touch, essentially. It was just like, oh, nice. plays a lot of D&D, &D, and Courtney, you know, has an Instagram account where she paints D&D miniatures. And I'm very awesome. glad. It was our, our, our mutual friend, Andrea House, put us in touch. Oh, nice. Very cool. An actor and musician here in Canada. Oh, lovely. OK, so we have, I don't know if you picked up my neighbor's bad muffler, but that just went by. So we have the mask up on his little face. And yeah, I got a little bit of paint over there, but I'm not worried because we're going to be painting the pack next week. Um, so what I'm going to do now is start bringing the same earth uh, onto the arms down to about the forearm area on both arms. So right about there-ish. And then also bring it around the front of the neck and then around the back of the legs. But I'm also going to leave this belly area open because that's where we're going to do that lighter brown on his tummy. Okay, so that's mostly where this earth brown is going. Okay. Yeah. 
following along with with what's on the picture. Yeah, as best you can. I mean, obviously, with the picture, you kind of have the freedom of some of that stuff gets put on before, like, you know, say the pack. (laughs) So do what's reachable for you. Yeah, we've been spoiled in the last couple of minis that they've come in pieces. It's been Mm -hmm. like, let's just not put this piece on. Right. Uh, Brad D. Mag wants to know, have any of you used a magnifying glass when you're painting minis? Yes, (laughs) most definitely. Especially with my now middle-aged eyes. <laughs> I, uh, I, well seasoned I eyes. You'll you will see me you will see me peering over my glasses quite a bit as I do this. Yeah. I, um, well, I go for it. No, you uh, first. I, well, fine. Uh, I have not used a magnifying glass yet for minis, but uh, on a infrequent basis, I have used it for uh, reed making for the oboe, which is essentially the same kind of problem of needing to do fine detail work up close and not necessarily needing having whatever you're working on right in your face especially since that involves knives um and it is (laughs) it can be a little cumbersome but it is very very useful especially for longer stretches of time because the last thing you want is eye strain so yeah uh whatever works so that you can be comfortable is the most important thing Exactly. And, and I'll I'll grab readers, honestly. Um, I have a couple pairs right here. Like, if I really want to see some details, and this is where I always feel like I'm going back to my teaching days, I'll just pop these on at the bridge of my nose and mm-hmm. look down and use that. So that way I can <laughs> I can do the fine detail work and then look up as needed to refocus and see what's going on around me. Because, um, you know, when you're painting minis uh, for enjoyment and you're kind of taking the day and you have two kids playing their video games upstairs, sometimes you need to stop and figure out what's going on. <laughs> So the glass is sort of, it, yes, there is such a thing as like, it's quiet, too quiet. <laughs> what have you been doing? Mm. Yeah. I don't have any kids or pets or anything. I just enjoy a good stretch every now and then. Yep. That also is a good thing to do. But yeah, they have like the um, type of things you can put onto your head if you wanted. There's there's like a bunch of different mini painting gear out there. Um it just depends on how much you want to invest in and what works best for you is really what it comes down to. Uh, we do have Sultry Shea in the chat who uh, wants to know, sorry if this has been asked, but the website says Boo is sold out. When will the pre-order be available to purchase again? Um, just just so we're clear, while we've been calling this Boo, this is actually just the giant space hamster. Yes. Uh, it is a limited run. So I, my suggestion would be talk to your friendly local game store and see mm-hmm. when the next time they may be getting some in because uh, they may know when more are coming in. A lot of them will let you uh, put one on reserve, you know, pre-order. So that would be yeah. my suggestion. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, kind of keep an eye on the website and check back in every so often if you're looking at dndmini.com for the giant, giant space hamster limited edition paint kit um, or check with your local game stores. Um, this is one of those things where it's hard for whiz kids to even call as to when this will be available again because supply can be found in other locations, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it might be one of those things where even if it's not out right now, there might be um, something where more supplies come in depending on where everything is right now. Hmm. So. But the nice thing is, is this does go up as a VOD on the CNE YouTube channel. So oh, if yeah. you don't have the mini kit right now for painting, you can always go back and do it later using the VOD. And while you're there, subscribe, because you know. <laughs> hey, I have to pull the that. YouTuber thing. <laughs> Like, comment, and subscribe. There mm-hmm. you go. I've done the thing. I've now gone for the eyes and done the the streamer thing. There you go. So I'm done. I can just leave it. Yeah. Yep. So, so Mark. Yes. Uh, have you painted minis of any of your um, characters? Any, not just of, say, Brother Uriah, but of Bayloth or any other PCs that you've played? Uh, well, of course, WizKids very handily uh, came out with an Aslan Rex mini uh, in the uh, in their Ravenloft set. So yes, I have one of those, and I did. Uh, there uh, was uh, additional paint put onto that, uh, and I do have I do have Bayloth and Brother Uriah minis, mm-hmm. uh, but 
but I got those color printed, so I didn't have to paint them. They were already, they were they were painted up already. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. I do think, however, that I'll probably at some point go in and just so that they, you know, they mm -hmm. can stack up to some of the other minis. Yeah. It's funny. It's I was asked when that when that whole like color printing thing was first coming out, people were like, well, aren't you scared about these color print minis? I'm like, no. It's like, look at what I do with the pre-painted minis when they come my way. I still paint them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just because it oh, starts yeah. with color doesn't mean the painting has to stop. Because you can personalize it a little bit more, fine tune it a little bit more. Oh yeah, the level of detail that you can get in a, a hand-painted mini is still well above what you can get in the pre pre-colored stuff. Although it is really nice for for those of us who it's are great. not necessarily as as painterly inclined to be able to mm -hmm. get those custom minis. And and now I'm just upset because this this hamster's hand is in the way of getting under their arm. Wow. <laughs> and now we're back to that. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. back to the armpit dilemma. Oh no, back to under armpities. Yeah, um, armpits are the bane of my painting existence. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I said it. It's fine. There's a clip. <laughs> yeah. you know, actually, one of the things that I'm dreading eventually having to do is paint the teeny tiny symbol of Ezra on Brother oh. Uriah's shield. Because I, I'm thinking I'm, I'm probably going to get Courtney to do that. I was going to say, <laughs> you might have to outsource that So much more skilled. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done some fine detail work, looked at it and gone, well, drat, and then painted over it again? Done oh, some... yeah. Uh, that's almost all the fine detail work I've done you're, <laughs> you're describing, yeah. I mean, that's been a lot of my fine detail work, but usually the second time I go after it, I'm like, well, this isn't any better. Well, I guess this is what it is now. <laughs> I still got to get to the point where the second time is is noticeably better. But, you know, I'm working on it. Yeah. And it all comes with practice and everything like that. You learn what tricks work for your hands and the motions that you're comfortable doing. For sure. Uh, question. Are we taking this brown all the way down into our hamster's legs? Yes. Here, I have the I have the one side done because I had a feeling that question would come up. So I tried to get one side done before the other side. So this is what it looks like on the one side to give you sort of a frame of reference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've already kind of, started doing that. Yeah, kind of Excellent. following that. It's not a seam line, but the 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 fold thigh, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It definitely works out well there. Well, hello, Miss Thing. You might have a Rory sighting soon. You say that like this isn't a weekly thing. I know. I'm just letting the chat know we might have a little girl sighting. <laughs> I feel we like see. we need cat emotes in the chat for when. Oh my god. When between you and Sean, I think there's right? plenty of chances for for kitty emotes to show up. Uh, I can almost guarantee that my dogs will make their presence known at some point. <laughs> Which and that will be for. okay. Absolutely. I mean, hey, maybe they want to paint along. These cats constantly want to help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yes, I have my spotter and I have the uh, lap warmer. All that good stuff. I only have Luke, who is actually very good at keeping off camera when he comes into the office. <laughs> <laughs> I should invite I him on at some him. point and be like, "You should." He oh, is and Luke. Please, please uh, thank him for the rather excellent uh, Brother Uriah cartoon uh, oh. that he did to welcome Brother Uriah to Idol Champions. Glad you enjoyed it. I definitely one. will. Yeah. Which. For those who are wondering, if you check out Mark's Twitter, uh, they just tweeted out today. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think it's on my Instagram as well. Yeah, it is. It's on Twitter and Instagram. I keep forgetting. And on Instagram. Facebook now that I think Yeah. Of it. Oh, yeah, that's right, because you tagged me in it. Yes. Absolutely. So, yeah, you can find those. Uh, Mark, your Mr. Dot Mark Mir one I on am... Instagram. I am. Okay, so I, I don't have unified social media handles, yeah. so I'll say that right now. Uh, so I am uh, Mark underscore Mir on Twitter and Mr. Mark Mir, that's M-R period Mark Mir on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm bad and I keep forgetting about everything other than Twitter, which is just my bad. 
Although okay. I've been trying to be better about at least branching out for, uh, you know, just to have some stuff in other yeah. places just in case. But... Yeah. Well, we had we all had that. I was actually uh, uh, doing a D and D cruise when it was sort of oh, like that's right. People oh, started geez. telling me it's like, oh yeah, Twitter's going to be gone by tomorrow. I'm like, what? Oh, uh, uh, I guess I, <laughs> I guess I should join Hive. Uh, yep. <laughs> yep. I did that whole thing. I did Mastodon, Hive, mm -hmm. um, Gamatica, which I have not touched since started. It, it was more the, okay, everyone's throwing all these different socials out. Let me just make sure I can get VMUs. Um, exactly. Where possible. Same. Is really what I was doing. And I'll go into Hive, like, at on the weekends is kind of when I go and I check my Hive. Um, but, yeah. I've it's just enough to have it. Exactly. And and I have had enough people who threw up their hands and left Twitter and went to Hive to make it so that I do visit Hive on a slightly more regular basis. But mm. it, but it is uh, it's a thing I constantly have to remember to do, whereas right. Twitter is the kind of thing in where I pick up my phone and I'm automatically opening it, which is probably a bad thing. <laughs> I, should, I should probably stop that. You know, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Hive really needs to work on their indoctrination. <laughs> you know ironically enough once they get a website app i probably will be doing the same yeah uh, right now it's all the growing pains and figuring out what mm -hmm. works best for everyone and true enough you know we'll see what it happens was... with the good old tweeter yeah it was kind of useful to have that moment of and not not the panic part, but the no. part of, hey, we've been using this for direct messages. Mm -hmm. Is this actually the best way for us to communicate? Would you prefer right. communicating in some other way? And uh, having several people go, you know, actually, I kind of hate using these direct messages. Can we move to you know, email? Mm -hmm. Can we move to this has been very useful. So, yeah, I feel like it was it was like when you move. And you absolutely hate having to pack up everything and you know you're going to have to throw some stuff out because not everything's going to fit. But afterwards, right. you, you kind of feel better about reorganizing mm -hmm. everything. Yep. Yep. I can I can vouch for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know nothing about I can about recently moving. vouch for that one. Not at all. Uh -huh. Heck, I just, I was, um, I took the holiday break to actually go back in those areas where I just threw boxes over the summer. <laughs> like, now I'm going to like rearrange these and organize this stuff and... Um, my mom was helping me move and there were a couple of boxes where I think she just kind of stuck the boxes there because she didn't know where the stuff was supposed to go. Yeah, and there were these fair. big boxes and I opened it up and there's like two things in the box. I'm like, oh, well, that just opens <laughs> up a whole bunch more storage space than I realized I had. Um, so, now, uh, yeah. The uh, box art has no rear views of our, our hamster friend here. So yes. this big this butt at the back here painted the I just friend. went with the brown. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you asked because I was just about to... To ask myself about the butt. It's all about the base. Mm. So yes, here's what it looks like for the tushi. Aw. Yeah. It's so much more tush -tush. cute now that it's brown. I don't it's know why that look. is, but it's true. It is. And do your best to get underneath, but it's a tight squeeze under there. Oh wow, I didn't even know. Yeah. Holy yeah. crap. Yeah. If the uh if the armpit was a challenge. You wait until you get to the rump. Oh, exactly. well, I'm there. Hi, this is honey. Exciting. No, I can't play fetch right now. No, honey. She brought me Spider-Man. <laughs> she wants to play fetch. You know, okay. out of context, that's an incredibly interesting sentence. <laughs> she brought me Spider-Man. She wants to play fetch. Well, she has this Spider-Man toy. It was full of catnip, which is now no longer full of catnip. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was Spider-Man, and she plays fetch with this thing every day, every day. She'll even leave it in bed at night, and I'll wake up some mornings with Spider-Man in my hand, because she'll drop it in my hand while I'm sleeping. Wow. Yes. I mean, I shouldn't yeah. be surprised. You have very friendly, insistent cats. So mm -hmm. every time they do something like that, I, I should not be surprised. Okay, so this is what I have for Boo literally all around. And again, I'm not getting worried about the fact there's paint on other things because we're working from the inside out, basically. Um, mm -hmm. So the next I'm thing we're going to do... Almost there. I'm still butts. 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 There's a certain song now stuck in my head about big and butts, but we won't go there. 
Um, (laughs) Show your generation without showing your generation. (laughs) There's been a lot of that meme stuff recently. Hasn't there? Yeah. Boomer, what is it? Boomers, Gen X, Millennials, and what's the other one? Zennials? Gen Z? Z All the other stuff, which I've completely lost track of. And maybe (laughs) this just makes me old. I don't know. But I've lost track of what I am, what other people are. (laughs) I've, I've, I just don't, I don't know anymore. Right. Are we we into the Generation Alpha yet? They said the next one was going to be Alpha. I think so. Are we there? I think we're close. (sighs) Someone in chat will help us help yes. help chat. We we invite chat on a regular basis to look up stuff for us because Chats, our yeah. hands get full. They have our timers yeah. for when we uh, need someone to tell us when to stop doing things Siri. that are being. Yeah, <laughs> chat is incredibly useful. I love our chat for that very reason. Hey chat. <laughs> hey chat. Could you would you? All right. Yeah, so, they're, they're already talking about Sir Mix a lot. And I knew that was I I yep. I knew that seed was gonna get planted and they were gonna be off and running with it. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh Skippy uh Sirso. Uh yes. The the bots in chat may not be used to people talking about the the posterior of a hamster. And so please do not take it personally if you say something about the the bottom of this mini. And mm-hmm. the Moobot comes along and says, nope, it is not you, it's Moobot. But, you know, we have to be careful here on this chat, on this, on this channel. Oh. So I apologize in advance if you're, <laughs> if Moobot's just like, you can't talk about butts. But how to okay. discuss the music of Sir Mix-a-Lot then? <laughs> They're actually doing a great job. Um, let's see here. I can't lie, that song is catchy. Uh, Baby got the chat, chat is my, yep. my my favorite one from Arcos Ren. <laughs> oh gosh, Butiferous Boo Bottom from Sly uh, Therius. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Sir Mix a Lot code for next week, Lauren. That has been put in um, as a special request. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, Sean, do me a favor. Oh. Grab that from chat and put that in our little backstage chat and I'll see what I can do. Oh, gosh. Yes. Because Brother you Orion. Yep. Brother Orion, Voronika. Hello, darlings. You get Dark Lords. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. With, yeah. Fortunately, with Brother Uriah join, joining, I have other code words to use in the code. Uh, Mark, you've been working with us long enough that any combination of Mark and or Mir in a code just doesn't work anymore. It's already oh, been right. used. <laughs> Baylot's, already, Baylot's already used all that up, has he? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, between Baylots and uh, the Black Pits and, and everything, trying to come up with a unique code that includes your name, I just I had to throw up my hands and go, well, that's just not going to happen. It's I'm sorry. I've only got I've only got eight letters to work with, and not even a middle name to throw in there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, that's what that's what made your name so good for codes to begin with, because it's <laughs> sets of four, sets of four, sets of four. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I was I was not fast enough. All right, I see V has gone on. Yeah, to I'm color. starting to mix. So what I'm doing is um, three parts of the elfic flesh. Which mm-hmm. I'm still not nuts about that name, oh, um, and I'm mixing okay. it up with one part, um, scrofulous, scrofulous brown, which I'm going to start calling scruffy brown. Okay, uh, but we're going to mix one part of this to two parts of this again, thin it out a little bit, and that's basically going to go on the rest of the hamster's fur, um, so the cheeks, the forearms, the belly, and a little bit of the chest area is the plan. Sure. I and I'm going to thin that out, too. I just had a little problem oh. with it closing, too. Do, do, do. All right, you said one part... One part um, scruffy brown. And two parts... Three oh, parts. Frick. Three parts. Oh. Three parts. Oh, yeah, because yeah. there is a lot of... Yeah. There is okay, a lot. Okay, so it's really just a little little dash of the scruffy Little dash. Brown. A little dab will do you. Because mm. we want to aim for a warm beige, which I will swatch on my wrist in just a moment. So you get a little context for color. Excellent. Yeah, the names on these pots that came with this hamster are amazing. 
<laughs> and I, I really only, are. I only say that half joking. They, they really mm -hmm. are. I mean, we're having fun trying to say scrum, 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 scrum <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Scrums. With Elf, with Elric. No, Elf. I knew Elfic. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> yep. Dang it. <laughs> Oh, you but know as what? I mentioned, Elric, Elric was a very pale gentleman. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there we go. All right. So there's the swatch. You can kind of see the side by side. And remember, these are base colors. So for everyone's like, but wait, those are kind of darker than what we're seeing on the hamster below. That's because we have a lovely thing called dry brushing happening today as well. So we're getting our base colors on because we want certain undertones to happen in the fur. So I got that on there. And now I'm going to start painting the cheekies and the forearms and the tummy and all that goodness. And I'm just going to switch over to cute body part names because how often do we get to use cutesy names for a miniature? <laughs> We're like, That's true. paint the talons, paint the stabby thing. Paint the fourth set of limbs, the fifth set mm -hmm. of limbs. Mm -hmm. And so this this new color is going anywhere fur, anywhere has, not fur been has not been painted. Exactly. Awesome. Anywhere the fur has not been touched. The hands and the feet were gonna be going uh, with a different brown. But for now it's fur time. Okay. And pardon me while I catch up on chat and questions that came through. Remember, if you do have any questions for, for Mark, for us, about mm -hmm. Idol Champions, about Brother Uriah, who's in the game, about mm -hmm. hamsters, sure, we'll answer all those questions. Put chat, uh, question in big capital letters before your question. So that way I don't miss it. Uh, Siffy Sierso uh, says, these are based on the golden teddy bear Syrian hamsters, though I wouldn't mind seeing a Russian dwarf or a winter white. I, mean, I know there's different kinds of hamsters. There are, yeah. But I did so... not know this one was based on something else. So what I'm hearing is we need to get more of these space hamster minis if they sell them as their own individual things, which they usually do, honestly, a little bit later on after the paint night, after the paint kits happen. Mm. Um, they'll be sold as like just a separate mini, um, usually operative word, usually. Um, and I believe, so I think case. there was, I think there was a pre-painted mm -hmm. version of yeah. this as well. Yeah, so. so you could always snag that and then custom paint if you so choose, but that could be fun just to get a lineup of these cutie pies all like in different hamster breeds. Oh, I, mm. I'm kind of, I'm kind of here for it. I am too. Yeah. <laughs> An yeah, Icewind Dale I... winter white hamster. Oh, and we could give it a snowy base. Oh, that'd be amazing. See, now okay. I just want to do a whole line of winter versions of creatures. The the space hamster, the owl bear, just snowy owl bear. Oh, those are fun to do. <laughs> and adorable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we haven't done I I look behind me because that's where most of the minis we've painted are. Uh we have not done creatures that have a lot of white in them yet. No, we haven't. Which I know so is its definitely own explore that. painting It's challenge. an interesting, it is, yeah, because it's not so much whites as it is, um, yeah, some white, but then also depending on the, if it's a warm white or a cool white, uh, beiges and grays that go underneath yeah. it. Yeah. Kind it's of the same thing when, with blacks and where it's it's not just grabbing yeah. black and covering exactly. something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, underarm pity, how am I going to get you? Right. One way or another. This yeah. I'm just gonna do that. What happened? Uh, Tyron76 that says, if this was the size of the Boo Mini, I can't wait to see the scaled matching Minsk Mini. <laughs> Which that was a mouthful to say. And also, I kind of now want to see if this is the Boo Mini, the the size of the Minsk Mini to go with it. Well, let's see. Yeah. This, this is, if this was just a standard, <laughs> this is what the scale would be. Medium I... Mini to that. Now, if this was Boo, yeah, this was he's Boo. About, he's about half the size of a regular hamster, say. So, yeah, Minsk would probably the Minsk mini to go with this would probably be about four or five feet tall. Yeah, <laughs> so my height. <laughs> so how, how big is Minsk? Like about three and a half. Minsk's nearly seven feet, isn't he? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Oh wait, no, we actually we had to look this up. I think it's like six three or six four. Oh, okay. So so yeah. three foot two. That mini would be three foot two. Hemingway! 
<laughs> You're about that long. Come here. Which a mini uh, that is three foot two would go along with all of the other. That's quote, the unquote, height. Minis. That's the height of some of the smaller things that Whiskers has put out there, like the foam creatures. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just goblin. thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And the, uh, I don't know if you saw the closet at uh, Gen Con this year. Oh, I didn't Ooh, go to Gen Con. Fun. No, the closet. I'll have to the take life, a yeah, The life-size closet. closet they're putting out is like, oh, I must have this. <laughs> I hope they do an imp as well. Oh, that would be fun. An imp would be amazing. I mean, both that of those. That would be as so much fun. For familiars, for when you play, mm-hmm. when you play a warlock or a imp? wizard, that'd be amazing. They could put out a I whole have. familiar line. And people would would be so happy. I mean, I mean uh, we're hitting his whole uh, face with this. Uh... Yep, everywhere you didn't put that little earth mask. Okay. And now it sounds like a spa day. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, oh, we've just given this this hamster the day off, and yep, got a clay mask going. Yeah, it's all good. I haven't done one of those in a while. They always feel like they're supposed to be, they're supposed to do a lot more than they actually do. Maybe I just haven't mm. gotten the right, the right mask. But it feels very indulgent at the time. Like I'm, I'm dirty on purpose, and this is great. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm doing a little bit of feathering where the fur is in the arm, just to kind of blend it together and not have a hard line going on there. But I'm waiting to do that until my paintbrush isn't as highly loaded. Just as an FYI. Oh, so like right. painting in one place and then, then coming kind back of, over. Yeah, coming back over and sort of adding that extra detail exactly. Ah. Yeah. Hi, Hemi. Yeah. Chairman POW says that size Minsk could be a Warhammer 40k epic unit. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. There's going to be a point in where WizKids just starts putting out minis that are life-size minis that are not minis, but they're going to call them life-size minis. Because that's what we're just used to. It's like, oh, did you pick up that life-sized mini dragon? Oh, yeah, God. I have it in my spare room of my house. I have it on top of the house. Who are we kidding? Mm-hmm. I have it on the roof. <laughs> I bought it for Halloween. It's my Halloween decoration. See, that's something Todd would absolutely do. Uh, yes, 100%. I mean, he's already got the inflatable one for outside, right? so an actual real one. Well, a, a I real did mini. see that. I saw that excellent inflatable dragon. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hemi has joined the mix. Yay! As long as it doesn't actually join the mix, he's right behind me. Say hi, Ham. You gonna sit on my lap nicely? Everybody in chat, say hi to the kitty. Say hello. Hello, Come kitty. On. Sit down, please. Sit down, please, sir. No, we don't need to love the camera. <laughs> the camera can love you, but you don't have to love up the camera. How's that? And you think? See the yep, hamster? There's everyone chat saying hi to Hemingway. I'm telling you, we got to get emotes of yep. the cats. Like, that would be funny. Yeah. Like Jason Charles Miller has uh, emotes of his dogs for mm-hmm. when they show up. We We deserve emotes of your cats. I think Hemingway agrees. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Sit the tushin down. There you go. Yeah, kitty cam. Listen, we've already got four different cameras going on on God. this on this overlay. <laughs> I don't know if we have space for a fifth. Yeah, we're kind of running out of room. Okay, okay. No, buddy. Here, just just simmer, honey. <laughs> just simmer down, okay? I'm trying to quickly take a look at chat, and all I see is the kitties. <laughs> all yes, I see is kitty. the cat insisting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> Sir Narvi immediately. There's room for a fifth camera. Come on, Lauren. Give the audience what it wants. I mean, let's let's. Okay. I don't know if my my computer could handle. I mean, I could pull in. I have another webcam I could use. Mm-hmm. I am actually debating this. Look what you've done, <laughs> chat. I mean, honestly, the answer is 
while we have a guest like Mark, we can't yes. have a kitty cam. No. And then, <laughs> and then uh, once we unfortunately do not have Mark anymore, that's where the kitty cam goes. It could. It could very well I'll, have a I'll, kitty cam. I'll leave right now if it gets No, me. no, no, don't you dare. <laughs> no, nope. no, no, no. No. We went through too much, too much planning with the giant space hamsters. <laughs> and we're happy to have you. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not sure if you know, but my very first voice game, uh, voiceover work in Ooh. video games was on Baldur's Gate 2. Oh, very I cool. didn't know that was your first. Oh, nice. That, is, that was the first time, yeah, that I worked, well, not first voice work, but first voice work in video games and first work for Bioware. Huh. So, yeah, me and, this, me and the hamsters go way back. Yeah. Look at that. I've been meaning to play the remastered versions of Baldur's Gate 2 for quite a while. Oh, yes, the, the ones that uh, Beamdog did? Yeah, yep, I've been... I saw them and I got excited because it's been... A very long time. Uh, I'm trying not to think about how, how many years ago that I played the original, and so, oh, uh, but you know, time. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yes, there is. There are quite a few hours of gameplay in those. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine time. Oh, you but need that's time? Half the fun. <laughs> so, Mark, is there a particular character voice that gets stuck in your head after recording it for a while? Hmm. Uh, certainly, I, I think it's usually uh, because you're, you know, when whatever you're recording or something, the session is usually never more than four hours. But mm -hmm. when you're doing a play or something, you might be doing that for weeks and weeks. Uh, so then, yes, that stuff could really get stuck in your head. Not to the level of, say, uh, what's going on with Austin Butler currently, but. Uh, Wait, what, what's the, going on? <laughs> Oh, uh, he apparently is having a real hard time shaking the Elvis voice. Like, he just sounds like oh. Elvis now in his, ah. in his everyday life. Uh, oh, wow. And this is the first I'm hearing of it. Uh, yes, I think it was mentioned, like, uh, Golden Globes or whatever award show that, you know, when he accepted mm -hmm. something, he just, it sounded like he was doing the Elvis voice. And he's oh subsequently in interviews sort of just said, I just kind of sound like this now. Because I think he went really deep into method and it was mm. over months and months and during covid oh. so yeah oh, yeah he uh he is having some difficulty shaking it and uh, uh however it was reported i think it was dave batista uh just did an interview they're working on dune together and so when he's doing another character when he's playing another character it's fine he has no problem but it's just his default voice has kind of turned into elvis now so yeah default huh. to elvis that sounds like a new album. <laughs> I mean, that is that's a level of commitment that I I respect and cannot uh even come near. The only thing I can think of is that every once in a while when I'm playing a streamed TTRPG and I use the wrong character voice. Mm. <laughs> and it's just whoops, nope, that's not who I am right now. And that's that less about, be. oh, I'm stuck in a character voice and more just, oh, wait, no, I've been thinking about the wrong thing. Whoop, I just slipped mm -hmm. into the wrong thing. Yeah, that's definitely a thing for sure. Or I'm DMing and I use a voice and realize afterwards, oh, that's this character, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I guess they're going to have to be related now. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> they're siblings. <laughs> <laughs> I have, so the first campaign that my podcast did i have a a shop owner uh an inn and tavern in Waterdeep that my players basically turned into their second home base that is run by a gentleman named gestock who they eventually found out was a, a fairly high level monk and had his own backstory and stuff who i'd created completely for that campaign and then somewhere down the line i started playing orkira and it took me literally a year to figure out they're the same voice <laughs> and and I had to be told by one of my players because I'm thinking of such different characters because mm -hmm. Gestock is a human, just a gruff older guy. And apparently Orkira is my gruff older guy voice because, you know, I am not the professional that Mark is. But yeah, <laughs> at one point we were playing and one of my, one of my players was just like, is, I, I think are Gestock and Orkira related? And I, yeah, I guess. Oh, no. 
Oh no! Go with it. Go with it. <laughs> I mean, might, why not? It might just be from the same neighborhood or something. <laughs> right. It's like that's that's the uh, the dock district accent in Waterdeep. There you go. I beg your pardon, sir. Come here. Oh, what's Kitty doing? He's loving the camera again. Mm. <laughs> See his ear right now. That's just Wait, that's just hello. the kitty saying hi say to the hello. chat. Speaking of saying, <laughs> he is <laughs> right now. <laughs> hello. Oh, hey, oh, hey, look at that oh. big old kitty nose. Oh. <laughs> I looked up. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. That was adorable. Yep. He's yes, like, clip I'm right that, here. please. Yes. Please. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I looked away for one second. Yep, and boom, cat. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you, Sir Darby. You, Sorry. Awesome. Okay, so this is where we have Boo at this point, our little golden boy. Mm-hmm, now we're mm-hmm. gonna get his little paws all taken care of. And for that one, I believe we're just gonna need to jump into using yep, Parasite Brown. And if you want to, um, I should not have looked at that comment. I should not have looked at that comment. Um, If you want to jump down to the fine detail brush, you might find that a little bit easier for getting around the fingers and the toesies of this little guy. Sure thing. But yeah, we're going right for Parasite Brown. (laughs) Hemingway, the kitty versus Hemingway, the hamster. I think Ah. this mini's just been named. Yep, yep, I think we have to call it Hemingway. What do you think, Hemi? Should we get a hammy? See, I did the smart thing that you taught me about, about cutting the paint pots right. apart so that you could easily get at them. And now I can't find one of them. Oh, oh, oh. oh I didn't shake this one up. Oh, there it is. There it now, is. here's a question. Do you mm-hmm. remember? Mm-hmm. I'm I'm very old, so this maybe maybe you won't remember, but a TV show called Hammy Hamster. Like, I think the show was actually called Tales of the Riverbank starring Hammy Hamster. And it was basically a hamster. Oh. This uh, sounds very this familiar. This is ringing a very dim bell. Yeah, yeah it's up. like a, a, a hamster, a white rat, and a guinea pig. Yes. And they all lived on a riverside. And it was basically like actual hamsters and things like that, except they, they put uh-huh. them on like toy, toy boats uh-huh. and things like that. And yeah. Uh huh. Yep. I remember that. I used to watch it like up at my grandmother's house when I was little. I'm glad you said that, V, because on a regular basis, when these old TV shows come up, because I grew up in Buffalo. I always have the thought of now is but this that's, a But that's that's just it. It's upstate New York, which is near Canada. So yeah. so we're right. possibly a show. <laughs> Yeah. You might have been I it might have been Yep, Canadian. yep. Uh, it's a Canadian show. We found it on YouTube says Skiffy uh Circo. So yes, thank this you. is this is checking out go. completely. Mhm. Uh there's also I know that particularly upstate New York got um an old Canadian kids show called The Hilarious House of Frightenstein. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they, this somewhat fits because we're, you know, we're discussing That's Uriah. Totally cool. uh, yeah. And, and uh, there's a Ravenloft connection because it was basically like a kid's show that where all the, you know, there was a vampire and a, a Frankenstein monster yeah. and a werewolf. And yeah, so it was it was all horror. It makes characters. sense. God. Do you want to get back to talking about brother Uriah, but first I, for whatever reason, I completely forgot what we're coloring. The uh, feet what we're using this color and for. the hands. The so whole foot? The whole foot, the toesies and the handsies. Okay. Like I said, I I'm did the whole loving foot the fact brown. cute. So and you can paint over the, um, where the fleshy area is. Too. Yes, parasite yeah. brown. You can totally go back and paint where um, the, it's more fleshy than furry. Mm-hmm. Not a problem. Yeah, I just I didn't realize. No, it's totally okay. Got some extra brown all over. Oh well. No, it's fine. It'll still translate because the earth brown is darker, so if anything will act as an undershadow for the parasite brown. And just kind of bring yes. a little bit more of the details. I, that's you exactly totally what I was did thinking. I would uh huh. Mm-hmm. Very much mm-hmm. on purpose. I, mm-hmm. V, you've taught me very well. There we go. See? We're good. Hey. The underside and inside of his hands is nice. And it's going to be tricky. I honestly saved that one for later. I'm like, I'm going to go with the feet first. Hmm. You're jumping in feet first? Exactly. 
<laughs> Double Crayon says, you accidentally did the smart thing. I love it when that happens. <laughs> you know what? I'll take it. I'll take accidental uh, accidental yays instead of accidental whoopsies. Remember, happy accidents. They are a thing with painting. Oh, so I did want to ask. We've we've talked a bunch about Brother Your Eye, and you talked how yes. you uh, you have minis of, or you have a mini of Brother Your I do. Do you have minis of any of the other Black Dice Society members? I don't. Uh, I've got I've got Uriah, and I've got uh, Aslan, of course, the the one that WizKids mm -hmm. made. But uh, no, I'll have to eventually, you know, make uh, make representations of all of them. But I think you know. They should they should make their own and then we should all just uh pool our resources <laughs> there you go that's that's the moment where you all get together to play in person it's like all right we finished the minis oh that would be amazing Time i mean you guys got to do that we, for gen con last year we did right? yes yeah. yeah we actually did get to have like a live session with everyone and that was nice yeah and with mr jim zub as, as uh, lord, Soth. lord Soth. yeah, yeah. It was honestly a really great episode. I was watching. I did too. And then I did have the joyful moment of uh, the last time I remember encountering Lord Soth, Farida pushed him in front of a train. So, or Havilar, I'm sorry, pushed him in front of a, a moving train. So <laughs> it's amazing to have these memories of incredibly scary characters, ones that you're supposed to be terrified of and bring dread. And then you look and go, ha, you got pushed in front of a train. Too funny. Yeah, have there been the any... Fun. Oh, yeah. Have there been any uh, characters that have shown up in one of your games that you've you've had that experience before? Like, oh, this is the third time I've encountered Strahd. And the first time we dropped a whale on him. You know, one of those. <laughs> I did actually use uh, War Duke in my D&D uh, &D in a Castle campaign, the most recent one. Uh -huh. And uh, he, uh, he, he ended up being portrayed in several different ways. Uh, the first, because I, I ran like three separate sessions mm -hmm. of that campaign. Uh, and uh, I had sometimes had guest players, uh, guest NPCs playing War Duke, and that was a lot of fun. And there was some, uh, there was some great uh, intimidating behavior from War Duke. But uh, in one of the ones where I had to play War Duke because I didn't have an NPC for him, I somehow ended up, and it was probably because I'd seen the cartoon recently. Uh, I ended up making him a lot like Bane from the Harley Quinn cartoon. Oh, fun. So he was, he was uh, not quite as intimidating. He was, he was certainly formidable. Like he mm -hmm. still had his stats. I was using like I think hero stats for him. So he was like, oh, yeah, wow. he was, he was quite a handful for the party. But he was also just a dummy. So it was really. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, he you know he sounded like that because of the hate of like, oh yes, there will be a reckoning. You know, so there was <laughs> amazing, amazing. I do feel like once you go into Bane voice in any way, shape, or form, there's there's going to be a level of of hilarity, mm -hmm. and and Batman references. Mm -hmm. Yes, that too, and Batman, and Batman. Uh, question: We're not painting the furry part of his feet with this color, are we? No, just the fleshy part. Okay. So this is what the feet look like. Oop, bring it down the frame. It's like that. Mm -hmm. That's probably why I uh, did my unintentional whoopsie with the feet. Mm -hmm. I will admit, I, I thought the whole thing was furry. That's totally fine. Maybe I just didn't I mean, look close enough. Yeah, you can even go in if you wanted to. There's a little bit here, but I know with dry brushing and stuff, it's kind of going to translate in the wash. Um, almost literally. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why it's like I'm going to focus it more towards the tips of the toes of the feet. So, okay. yeah. I mean, really, all said and done, as long as color gets onto this, it's not like it's a terribly wrong way once we start doing some dry brushing and everything. That's true. Dry brushing kind of yeah. fixes everything. I get some blending going in there. Okay, so that should take care of the hands and the feet. Mm -hmm. And Lom. Oh, wait. oh no. And then the underside of my hands, I realize. Oh no. Oh dear. Get in there. 
And we're going to jump over to, let me see, do I want that now? Yeah. We'll get the claws done with black. All right. Ooh, my black has a bubble. I was just about to go. say, the last time I opened one of these paint pots that were the black, it was, um, it was an experience. So let's see if this yeah. one will be kinder. Meanwhile, oh, since boy. we've reached halfway through our show, we're going to have people coming in from the game. Hi, welcome. Hello. We are painting a giant space hamster with Mark Mir. Because Hello. why not? Because why not have fun? Uh, if you do have any questions for any of us, go ahead and put those in chat with question in big capital letters so that our wonderful moderator, Sean, hold on a second. Sneeze, bless. No, I need to oh, open the paint, paint pot. pot. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I was having a moment in where I thought, oh, is this going to go everywhere? Uh, yeah, Sean is going to grab questions from chat and put them into this little backstage uh, chat that I have so that when I am trying to open paint pots and not spill them everywhere, I don't miss a question. Like this one from Bloody Moose, who asks, ooh, um, ooh okay, I'm going to ask this question. I will preface it by saying, spoiler alert for Black Dice Society. Okay. okay. So for, for those at home who want to avoid spoilers, now would be the time to cover uh, your ears. Look away. Yes. I mean, there's there's spoilers for Black Dice Society just in the skins we released for yeah, uh, exactly. Nara, so yeah, it's been a while. So that yeah, is yeah. true. But go on, wow. go on. We have done enough skins that have zero to do with the characters that are just fun that I feel like are uh that our fans are a lot more forgiving of of spoilers, but Sure. Um, Bloody Moose asks, I can't be the only one who noticed the similarities between Uriah's ending and the synthesis ending from Mass Effect. Maybe I am. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I had not I had not huh. personally considered that, to be honest. But huh. very interesting. Yeah. I think I think the Black Dice Society ending was a bit more on the sinister side, <laughs> and the <laughs> synthesis ending in uh Mass Effect tends to be a bit more hopeful. Uh, that's true if anything if anything it actually kind of reminded me of the control ending in mass effect where in uh again spoilers for mass effect that's been out for a while uh <laughs> where Shepard essentially becomes a reaper at the end yeah and, uh so yeah in some ways it, it reminded me more of the control that makes sense because yeah. yeah there uh uriah it's a little bit more sinister but there is that that touch of hope i mean beard quest is still out there so Be you there is know. beard quest beard quest is the one lifeline that we have exactly to, to hopefully avoid a horrible fate so you never you never know what could happen in the future whereas uh most of the endings to mass effect i felt were fairly final mm. Yeah, uh, actually, it's specifically, it's the renegade version of the control ending that it really reminded me of, because uh, there were there are two different versions of Mass Effect uh, control ending. If you're a paragon, it seems fairly hopeful. It seems like, oh, yes, well, you know, Shepard will continue to watch over in the in the form of this Reaper and whatnot. But the uh, there is certainly a more ominous tone to the to the renegade version and it kind of makes sense because renegade shepherd is a real loose cannon so if you've got somebody like that with the power of a reaper in a reaper's body it's like mm. this this might not go that well and it was <laughs> I, we were kind of trying uh again spoilers with the with the end of black dice society uh i won't go into too many details just so it's not blatant spoilers but yes right. to to give that impression that despite best intentions perhaps centuries and centuries of uh oh i don't want to give too many spoilers but but after a few centuries maybe even the best and most pure of hearts might be worn down i mean that is some of the true horror of uh mm -hmm. ravenloft in general for sure yeah that's true and you know that's one of the reasons why it was a ravenloft game so uh we did not, I think, uh, no one should have gone in expecting a, ha a, a traditional happy ending. <laughs> no. <laughs> and to be honest, I, uh, once again, spoiler for Black Dice, uh, I think a couple characters did get really 
kind of happy endings. Well, and yeah, it, yeah. It was a pleasant surprise. I think it was even more of a surprise because no one was expecting, mm. you know, anything happy to happen. But like, mm-hmm. um, I th- I think Fen actually probably had a, a wonderful happy yeah. ending. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Which was nice. But again, and but by by the same token, it's like it can't all be happy endings. There's going to have to be at least some bittersweet here. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to go in now and we're going to mix um, one part earth with two parts mm-hmm. scruffy brown. And we're going to mix this up and we're going to use that as the dry brush color for the where we put the earth on the hamster. So we're going to make okay. this more of a lighter golden brown. Okay, so... Uh, meanwhile, as long as we're deep into spoiler territory, Rex Verity yes. wants to know... Um, mm-hmm. Was it tough swapping between Uriah, Aslan, and Ferran? You made it look so effortless. Uh, I do a lot of improv, and I also do a lot of things where I play multiple characters uh, on stage. So I'm used to doing it live, uh, and uh, that experience certainly came in handy. It was really fun to, to get to jump back and forth between those characters. And of course, I have a lot of experience jumping back and forth between characters because I'm a dungeon master, so that's what dungeon masters do. Mm-hmm. Uh, as some of my players might be able to tell you, like sometimes there might be a scene where it's just me talking to myself for a while and, and the players can jump in if they like, but those characters will probably have, you know, they can, if you just let me go, they, those characters will just have a whole conversation. Yes. <laughs> it is an interesting gaming experience when you get a bunch of dungeon masters in a game um, because a lot of people have those kind of skills or are are at least comfortable with the idea of oh wait i'm playing two characters all of a sudden or or things like that um or taking over a description of a narrative Mm -hmm. Uh, i feel like people who have had the dungeon master experience feel a little more comfortable going into more detail when something happens to their character that is significant which Mm -hmm. i i really like i feel like that's kind of the one of the best things about people getting a dungeon master experience is when and if they get a chance to go back to being a player kind of opens up the the comfort level of some of the narrative opportunities because i i think that's great whenever players take that kind of control over their characters mm-hmm. okay Very so this true. is what that mixed brown is going to look like and v what was uh, the ratio again it was it was one parts? part earth to two parts scruffy brown Oh, okay. So oh, yeah. It's so more, more of the scruffy brown, brown than of the earth, exactly. Okay. I'm just gonna yeah, go in with a mix. flat little brush for dry brushing, and I'm gonna aim it into where that earth brown has been. If you go over a little bit, that's okay because we're gonna go back in and also do some dry brushing on the lighter part, so it just kind of acts as a blending. Oh, my paintbrush is a mess. Uh oh. Well, it's the the brush I use for mixing the end of it. Oh. It's it's I, it's what it's supposed to do. It's doing what it was meant to, but it is mm-hmm. quite the mess with all that mixing. Um, uh, Siffy Searso wants to know: When you play the games, do you discuss in advance what direction the game and characters will go? Then sort of roll the dice and fill in the blanks. Um, and I would suspect maybe Black Dice Society has uh, maybe a different answer than others streamed, but uh, I mean, I'll let you answer the two of you answer that. Uh, in general, no, no, you just you're 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 improvising yeah. it. You're it's, you're just going ahead. Uh, there's a special case in Black Dice Society, in my case in particular, because I wasn't just playing a PC. I was also playing one of the main antagonist bad guy in PCs. So B Dave essentially let me come up with. What, this is what Aslan wants, and this is what his plans mm-hmm. are. Uh, and so, like, we had we had a couple of meetings where it would basically just be me letting B Dave know my ideas for what Aslan was up to. Uh, but it wasn't it wasn't sort of like we're going to plan out this plot and then we'll see what happens and then we'll we'll just uh, fill things in. It was just like, well, this is what Aslan wants. We'll see what the dice say. We'll see what the players do. It could it could go any way, really. Mm, yeah, and. For Voronika, we knew exactly what we were doing with her from the word go. Um, but the <laughs> path to get to and from was very much open. And so that's where more of the improv came in, um, feeding off of what the other players were doing and thinking, et cetera, et cetera. So 
it, I, I want to say it's both. <laughs> yeah. There were some discussions ahead of time, and then there was some, you know, rolling the dice to see what would happen. So, yeah. I do remember, V, when you uh, you did your big reveal of Veronica, and uh, <laughs> you, you managed to convince everyone that it's like, oh, I'm traveling right now, so the yes. Wi-Fi is bad in the hotel, so I'll just have to be audio. I can't, my, you know, the yep. video feed stopped working. I bought that hook, line, and sinker. That was... <laughs> and you were there for, like, the very first meeting of the Dark Lords. Yeah. And... <laughs> I, I, but, uh, but I completely, it's like, oh, well, uh -huh. I guess V's traveling. I guess, uh, I guess we won't. And so I wasn't expecting the costume. Yeah. Which was very nice. I, the yeah. beautiful thing about that was... Everything about that was true, except for the bad Wi-Fi. <laughs> mm -hmm. wow, she was, was traveling. She was actually traveling. Yep. Yep. I mean, it yep. always helps when your lie has a lot of truth embedded it in it. It was mostly it truth. The Wi-Fi was pretty darn decent. Um, mm -hmm. It was one of my lesser cameras, because I'm not taking my nice cameras traveling with me. Sorry, but not happening. Um, but yeah. No, it was, that, was, that was so much fun to do. And God, I was so nervous. But the crew uh, is awesome. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to play in a game or be a, dem a DM in a game that's a stream game and where it's included that much co-player planning, I guess you would call mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah. But for, I think for any D&D &D game, and even more for some stream games, having those kind of discussions with your players on a regular basis about what people want and what people want to do, and then even during shows as you're getting ready um having the hey this is probably going to be slightly more combat heavy or hey just to let you know after you do this you're going to level up uh giving those kind of warnings just to ease into the the slower parts of D&D &D, like oh now we all have to roll initiative and take 5 mm -hmm. minutes to get that to work but if you've if you've got that worked out ahead of time it just makes life easier yeah Okay. All right. I'm almost. I'm getting there. Slowly but surely, I'm getting there. Yeah, me too. I get a little addicted to dry brushing. That's the problem. It's so <laughs> fun. It's fun. It is. The hard part is remembering or figuring out when to stop. Yes. Be like, nope. Now I'm just painting. Now it's just too much. Yeah. I'm getting there. Uh, let's see. We've got. Flamin Rearnar? Fl 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 There's probably a way to pronounce this. I'm going to go Flamin, Flamin Rearnar. I have a question for Mark Mir. When playing at D&D, do you ever think, I wish X were here to play with us, where X is one of your voiceover colleagues that you've met? <laughs> well, I'm always up for having more people at the table. Uh, but generally, when playing D&D, you, uh, you play with the group that you're in front of. And... On on rare occasions, I do think it's like, oh, it'd be perfect to have them for a little NPC uh, uh, cameo or something like that. Mm. But uh, for the most part, yeah, you do. You're playing with the people that you're actually actually at the table with, or in the Zoom meeting, as the case may be. Yes. Yeah, just the virtual table. Does that mean in those moments, are you do you like, oh, this voice would be perfect if this person did it, and then do you then try to do an impression of a friend or? Oh, yeah, I, you know, a lot of my, uh, I, I, people, I'm not the first person to mention this, but if you just throw in impressions, it doesn't matter if they're any good because if if they don't sound a thing like the person you're trying to impersonate, people just think you've made up this entirely new character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. absolutely true. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and then uh, they wanted to know for me, do you ever customize your miniature parts? Um, let me think. I mean, I've got so few minis of characters of mine. Um, I can't think of anything in the past because either I've painted it as stock or I've been able to order it or I've been very, very lucky to have... Uh, say the fabulous folks over at D4 make me a custom mini, but uh, there is going to be an Orkira kit bash coming up in April mm -hmm. that we are Easy. going to be doing. 
Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I, I will actually get a chance to do a custom Orkira mini grabbing from multiple other minis. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, speaking of D4, do you mind if I do a little plug for a thing? Go for it. Always. Go for it. Uh, so uh, the folks at Devin and Dustin from D4, uh, who uh, I believe their overarching uh, thing is now known as Elder Eye Entertainment. Yes. Uh, we did a uh, Call of Cthulhu's uh, actual play. Uh, we shot that last year. And uh, it is currently streaming on the Roll20 Twitch uh, every Wednesday. And previous episodes go up on Chaosium's YouTube channel. So nice. uh, the stream is called Bookshops of Arkham. It was actually, the scenario was co-written by my friend Darren Ormandy and my wife, Belinda Cornish. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, so new episodes of that, as I say, go up every Wednesday. You can watch episode one right now on Chaosium's YouTube channel of Bookshops of Arkham. And I believe episode two should be going up on Chaosium's channel. I'm going to say Sunday, Monday. Yeah. Somewhere so on there. Very cool. At some point before episode three is shown on uh, roll for uh, sorry uh, roll twenty. Awesome. And can confirm it is a fantastic show, especially if you're looking for the the kind of TTRPG show that is the high production value. Um, well, thank you. Heads and boxes are fun, and I am never going to get tired of heads and boxes. But there's something really special about getting a bunch of people in the same room in a room that is made to look like the setting, dressed as their characters with amazing props. I mean, the the last yeah. show, there were a couple times in where, <laughs> Mark, you leaned over to grab <laughs> something and pulled like a knife out and it looked amazing. Yes, those were made by uh, Dustin, I believe, and Devin. And uh, yeah, some amazing props in that show. And a lot of tomes, let's face it, because that's what mm -hmm. that's often yeah. that's often what Call of Cthulhu about is about. Yeah. Ancient tomes. Yeah, I highly so... recommend watching both of those those episodes, especially especially all the way to the end, because the the tome that shows up in episode two is ridiculously amazing. So while we've been chatting, I jumped over to um, Elphic Flesh, and I'm dry brushing that on the more golden yellow areas. So if you've gotten to that point, you can move over that and do the golden yellow fur. That's you can nice. see so it starts shifting it. So that it looks is like for that. the tummy and whatnot. Yep, for the tummy and for the arms. So that's without and that's with. So you can Great. see it starts getting more of what's going on with the hamster down below. Yeah. I mean, they should have called this hamster flesh. Mm-hmm. Hamster fur. I mean, I get the sense that a lot of these colors, they're stock WizKids colors, and they didn't really create oh, specialty yeah. colors, or yeah, am I exactly. wrong? Are these... There have okay. been some specialty colors created for the prismatic paint lines, yes. Um, I do know that one. But yeah, a lot of times it's, you know, they have this batch and they just pull from the known batch collection. Okay. Put them in, you yeah. know. Which makes sense. I mean, yeah. the joke of there's only so many colors and there's only so many color names, uh, mm -hmm. I thought was true until I started to see all the names that Copic came up with, all of their marker colors, and then paints for paint colors. And I'm like, okay, no, nope, this is a never ending supply of names. Yeah. People will come up with 12 different ways to say a specific light blue, and each one right. will be different. This is very true. That's a that's a skill I do not possess. Oh, all right. And again, oh. you can blend it a little bit. See here on the legs, I've let it kind of creep between the two just because it gives that nice blending of what fur will naturally do on a critter. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sir Darby wants to know, for V, I'm enthralled mm -hmm. watching you dry brush. How long does a dry brushing brush last for you? <laughs> um, six months tops. <laughs> I don't know why that, that laugh. That, that was like the evilest I, dry brush laugh. I, don't know I am was. so hard on my brushes. I am known for being hard on my brushes. So it's, I almost like chuckle at the fact I'm like, they, that they don't stand a chance with me. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. It's like these poor brushes. Some people can get far longer out of them, but I've had this brush out for about five months now, and this is probably going to be its end of days, to be honest, because look at it's like all flared over and oh wow, tufty. yeah, yeah. I'm at the point I'm just being stubborn by using it. I should just open up a new packet. <laughs> I'm actually I'm kinda... also I'm also not very easy on the dry brushes. I go through them a yeah. lot. I, I it's like eh, this might last for one or two painting sessions sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There have been like some very scaly creatures. I'm like I am using this for this session, and that is it. Wow. Yeah. Whereas I was looking at this dry brush, going, ah, it's all right. Maybe I can get it. It's starting to go go fuzzy. And then I looked at yours v and i'm like okay wow no it's nowhere near that i should i should not be <laughs> i should not be as as picky apparently with my dry brushes yeah i'm rough on them and i know i'm rough on them which helps hey, but if it gets you what you want exactly exactly so i'm assuming it also depends on the uh the quality of the dry brush and uh, the, the size of it, probably, because I I know I've got a bigger dry brush around here somewhere, but we do so few of the larger minis that right. it just doesn't get used as often as as, as this guy. Um, based upon how I use brushes and the fact I have done terrain and everything like that, no, I'm just really hard on brushes. <laughs> I mean, that's size, size really doesn't come into play. It's more like, um, yeah, it looks like I used an eyelash curler on that brush, doesn't it? <laughs> Wee! Well, the funny thing is, mostly I present the brushes like this, so it's not as evident. And then I realize, like, oh, if you want to see what I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's a thing. I, I get it, though. I'm hard on yeah. keyboards. So I specifically go. bought a a keyboard for this computer that is said to be quiet. Uh, it's supposed to help mute sounds so that when you're typing and you're say on a call, people can't hear the clickety clacks. But I am so hard on my keys that people think that I've still bought a, a mechanical keyboard. Yeah. And and nope, nope. I just slam down on top of those keys all the time. How about you, Mark? How hard are you on your brushes and paints and painting supplies? As mentioned, like sometimes like uh, I have, I have blown through a dry brush just in one. Again, if if it's like a particularly large mini that has like a rough surface on it, like scales or lots of fur mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I have, I have uh, completely decimated a dry brush. I'm also, I'm terrible at, you know, when I open up my pink, like, oh yeah, I forgot to wash that one, didn't I? Oh well, mm. I guess that, it, this is this is now a paint Whee! stirring stick. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, there are I some mean, brush cleaners that can help resuscitate a little bit. Um, like, oh, I'm a good painter. This stuff is great. Um, it'll condition brushes and everything. It, it saved a few things for me, but it is not the panacea <laughs> of it, it, it won't save this. <laughs> it won't save this one. This one is pretty much it's going to be done after today. Um, I really like that packaging, though. That old yeah, timey, that old timey aesthetic. Feel. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it looks like pomade of some kind. Yep, it's yeah. called um, the Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver. So you can actually wash your brushes with it. And then what I do with clean water is I slick the brush bristles up again, and I do a quick run over the top of it because it's basically like soap. Um, so after I clean the brush, I'll go in with the damp bristles and I'll rub it over, and then I reshape the brush and hang it upside down to dry. Speaking of clean water, I'm gonna go grab some. I'll be right go back. Go for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm so, so happy this, with how this little face is looking. This has become my mixing brush, as you can mm -hmm. tell by the the end of it. Yeah. Um, and the reason is because I was using this mixing brush, or what this wasn't a mixing brush at the time, but I had used this to put on I can't remember which of it it was. It was one of the two Mod Podges, either the matte or the, oh, the glossy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I apparently did not do a very good job of rinsing this out. And so now the the, the bristles don't move. The, the, they get it's just, yeah, they're not even crunchy. They're stiff. It is, <laughs> this is just now a stick. So oops. it has become my mixing brush stick. Oh, whoops. <laughs> yeah, it'll happen. 
Fl- Flamian Renar wants to know, um, have I worked on any bigger demon figures? Not yet. I'm trying to think. I mean, mm-hmm. nothing nothing of the obvious kind. Nothing like a Baylor or something real big. Um, I mean, we I did work one. on the Hell Wasp, which I think is technically... That's a hellish creature, yeah. I think it's a fiend. I think yeah. it's a fiend. I, I can't remember if it's a demon or a devil offhand, but it is at least fiendish. Yeah, this is my um... Baylor. Ooh. I did it a while back. So it's got the fun little lava cracks and stuff. So I have done this one. Except it's got a weight issue. Dude likes to because lean of the back. wings. Yep. Yeah. So I have to create a custom base for that guy to kind of counterpoint the tip that we have going on. Um, okay. So I have the dry brushing happening here. What I'm going to do is you see how Boo sort of has like those two little white spots on the top of his head there. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go in with the multi purpose brush and with the tip of that kind of dry brush in those little white points on the top of his head. And that's in elfic flesh, yes? Yes, elfic flesh. I'm getting a lot of use out of this elfic flesh. Surprisingly, yes. They're just sort of above his eyes, right? Yeah. And again, kind of as as you see fit. Doesn't have to be like perfectly balanced or anything like that. I feel like it's an opportunity to give this creature eyebrows, which are always good for expressive faces. Mm Mm-hmm. Which I discovered when at one point I had uh, face paint on that covered up my eyebrows and I honestly could not recognize my own face. (laughs) (laughs) Humans without eyebrows are very weird. That's it's not a thing that should happen. There you go. Just a little boof like that. There we are. Oh, I connected mine. I, I see like a you little can, line. Yeah, if you want, you, that's just it. If you want to connect them, you can absolutely connect them through. Okay. See? Just how you kind of interpret it for yourself. So you got that going. Yeah. <laughs> I love the parts of the paints like this and where we're doing these fine little details on part of the mini when a whole other part of the mini hasn't even been touched yet. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I find that amazing. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to dust around the lower eyelid a little bit. Like so, just to give it a little bit of a highlight. Mm-hmm. It's okay if you're turning the eye a different color because we're going to go in and paint those in just a second. And then a little bit around the nose as well. Are we booping the snoot? We are booping the it- snoot with the brush. It is snootle boop time. It's snoot boop time. <laughs> this is what you all stuck around for, right, chat? Yep. Ever so gentle booping of the snoot. Mm-hmm. Doop. Oh, I might have booped it a little hard. Uh oh. Well, that's okay because we're gonna go back in and recolor the snoot with a bit of a little bit of the parasite brown. Is that Oof. our next thing? Yep. Just about to ask. All right. Uh, yep. So a little so. parasite brown on the on the nose yeah. itself, yeah? Yep, on the nose itself. And this is a, a dry brushing or a painting? Sort of an overbrushing, so not quite full throttle paint. So you're a little bit heavier handed than a dry brush because you do want it to change the color. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I see, and now trying to replicate is going to be the hard part. Definitely go in with more of a feather light touch to it, and that should help. Yeah. With building it up. And then don't forget the nose has a lower portion. Where the nostrils are. Mm Hmm. We're going to eventually hit this with, uh, what was the word? Rosy flesh? Yes. Yep, we are. Aw. It's going to be quite adorable. Okay, that's all we need of the parasite brown. Yes, I see the chat going boop. <laughs> Thank you, chat. A little boop. A little Thank boop. Thank you, chat. 
Okay, so while that dries, now we'll go back in and we'll do the eyeballs themselves with black. Because you can see yeah, that little like hamster it. has big little black eyes. Little tiny black eyes. I think I still got enough black, black on my paper plate here. All right, I'm going to try to do this with the actual brush instead of grabbing the toothpick. There's there a big go. enough eye that I think it's worth it. Yeah. All right, chat, this is the moment where you're going to have to talk amongst yourselves because we're doing eyes. I... You know what happens. Little beady eyes. Nobody ever wants to talk when they're doing the eyes. Or at least I don't. Although these are certainly bigger than Dahani's eyes. Yes. So there's that. Yeah, Dahani's eyes were quite the challenge last week. Between the size of the eyes and getting the bottle itself open, my goodness. <laughs> so, Mark, what's the most challenging mini you've ever painted? The most challenging mini? Uh, it was probably... Uh, th this would have been one of those old Ral Partha minis. Uh, I think uh, the name of the character was Yam the Half Ogre. Ooh. And he had, I still, I've still got him somewhere. Uh, as I recall, he had a bunch of severed heads hanging from his belt. And like oh, going in to do like tiny little rivulets of blood, you know, coming from the mouth of the heads and like, you know, teeny little, you know, the, the, distended faces and all that yeah that uh that was my biggest early challenge that i still recall and i was doing it with like there was one of my brushes that was basically just a single hair <laughs> like it was mm -hmm. just going in to get like a little tracing of blood down the side of the boat yeah that's always fun there have been times that i've thought about going after one of my older brushes and just getting a long a long hair off of one of the brushes to be able to do something like that. I mean, he talks about works. grabbing the whiskers from her cat. Hey, that worked last week. It did. I, I said it. <laughs> I didn't mean for that to sound dismissive. No, I know. I'm just laughing. <laughs> uh, I've known people who literally use eyelashes, like they take a mm -hmm. single eyelash and oh, use wow. it as a brush. That's, that's yeah. Hold on a second. I need a new brush. Bink. Oof. Hold on a second. My black got super runny. Shoot. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I dipped into my um, paint and apparently the black got a little watery all of a sudden. Oh. I'm just gonna, yeah. So I'm just going to quickly uh, clean that up. One moment, please. Okay, meanwhile, I'm putting the eyes down. I've, I think I've reached that point in where I can't make them any rounder without making them. There you go. Making them huge. But here's, I don't know how well this is going to show up on my camera, but there, there they are. Little boopy eyes. Boop the eyes. Oh, that's looking great. Did get a little sloppy on one side though. So I'm gonna it I'm happens. Gonna fix that. Okay, cool. That should save it. That is concerning. I think I need to shake my black up a little bit more with that one. Mm. Do, do, do. Oh, did I miss something? Hmm? Sorry, I have, I had a message in the backstage chat that I thought I had missed, but I have oh. not. Are we okay? Oh yeah, yeah, we're fine, okay. we're fine. I just got distracted by eyes. Ay, ay, ay. That's fair. Okay, now I don't trust this black. Okay, that's acting normally. <laughs> that's not running away on me. Here's to hoping. Oh yes, AceCon, um, I see that people in chat have already helped you with uh, using today's code that's down there. As a reminder, um, you can do codes that are more than 12. Characters, you can do 16. Just make sure you add the exclamation mark on the end. That is part of the code. Because I am one of those people who, if I'm one off, I just start adding exclamation marks to codes. I think There's only so are. much you can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I've also gotten to the point where I've, if it's multiple words, I will add exclamation marks in the middle of words. Mm-hmm. Like I need mm-hmm. three more characters, but this is kind of the, yep. the best code I can come up with. All right. What other symbols can I use? All right, here we go. Oh, there we go. Saved it. Whew. So yeah, if for some reason your um, paint should go beyond where you were thinking, if you can catch it fast enough with just a clean brush and water, you can remove some of it. Hello, Rory. Hi, Kitty. Here's another one. Here's another oh. one. And while you're, while you're scratching the cat, V, this is a good question for you from mm-hmm. Flame and Renar, who wants to know, um, do any of you build terrain or build furnitures for dungeons? Yes, I do. I have a whole YouTube channel you can check out called The Crafting Muse with many tutorials. There's uh, there's like 199 videos. I know it's almost, actually, no, it is 200 now. Um, so there's 200 videos over there. Most of them are terrain builds. Some of them are live stream painting of miniatures like this. Uh, so yeah, you can go check it out. And I have everything from sand terrain to water terrain to dungeon terrain to jungle terrain to oh, a lot of different terrain, quite frankly. <laughs> How about you, Mark? Have you done any terrain building or painting? Uh, j- not, uh, not usually under my own steam, usually as part of like a workshop where somebody is doing like, we're going to learn how to build uh, trees and whatnot. Joe Levin from uh, Encounter Terrain was actually leading a bunch of terrain building workshops over at uh, D&D in a castle nice. uh, oh. when I was just there in the fall. They did, yeah, some amazing like trees. Uh, he also on his channel, like he pours resin and, you know, makes ponds and all sorts of things. Yeah. yeah he gets oh, wow. he gets very into it. Yeah. I love doing that type of work. It's fun. Okay. That would be super cool to do here. We just don't have the the facility the for it. For it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and I I can only get so much airflow in this office. Yeah. So with stuff yeah. like Oh no. Uh trust me. Like with the heat and he strong. very much stresses this. It's like do this in an area with lots of ventilation because it's yeah. just yeah. And it you some, really some of the depending on the resin you're using, sometimes it's like this is gonna stink for about a week. So mm-hmm. keep it in a well ventilated area. Especially when you're doing like he's doing like big swamp pores that are the size of an entire gaming table and it's just yeah, yeah. It's, you need yeah. ventilation. Absolutely. All right, so now garage. we're gonna go to the rosy flesh. Ah, and we're going to use this and we're going to dry brush this on the hands and the feet that's, and on the nose. That's actually a good character name. Good NPC Rosie name. Flesh. Rosie, Rosie Flesh. Mm. <laughs> she works the tavern. Ironically, she's a warforged. <gasps> I love yeah, it even more. Yeah, she is made of steel. Made of steel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm here for this. And this is this is for the little boop on the nose? For the little boop yeah. on the nose and a little boop on the fingers and the toes. Okay. That rhymed. Well, I wasn't even to... trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly managed to open that in a not helpful way. Uh oh. Uh, did your pot go poof? Yep. Oh shit. Kind of overturned as I opened it. But oh, what what can you do? That is, that's what this paper towel is for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. V has had to deal with me on several occasions, spilling a variety of stuff all over the desk and and messaging her in the backstage chat going i'm just gonna be cleaning for about a minute or two could you could you just keep talking if you don't see me painting that's what that's what's going on i i did not have null oil for months because it yeah basically Ugh. was all over my desk it capsized hmm. it happens yeah. it happens are you really painting if you don't at some point make a mess I was just hoping not to make that much of a mess. And I know, I know. Have to wait for several. I think that was the kicker. Is well, that's not like the just supply was weird. Yeah, I would go into Mox, which is uh, for those that don't know, that's my friendly local game store, and go up to their wall of Citadel washes, which is always impressive. And literally for months, the one empty spot would be null oil. And one of the the wonderful people who work at Mox at one point came up and said, like, I was looking at it and they could see what I was looking at. And they went, yeah, yeah, that ain't coming in for a while. I don't know why. And walked away. <laughs> That's Ugh. not helpful. What's going on? Why is it this Ugh. one wash? Because it's used so much, quite honestly. It's a popular wash and it's hard to keep in stock, I'm sure. And yeah. then there were supply chain issues that have been happening for a lot of people, too. Yeah. So, 
a lot of unfortunate factors coming into play with each other. I mean, definitely not the worst problem in the world by far, because you can definitely Mm -hmm. make your own null noil. But it it was always funny to stand in front of the wall and that have the one thing not be there. Yeah. The one wash to rule them all. (laughs) (laughs) This is the one wash I needed. It's the one wash that everybody needs. Pretty much. All righty. Peaches, peaches, peaches. The toes. This is the part I like where it really starts coming more to life as you do this. I will have to use my nicer camera on my phone to take pictures because the face cam just isn't cutting it today. Mm, yeah. Mm. 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 Look, hey, you're showing up nice. Yeah. Oh, dry brushing in try, dry brushing the palms. All right. Mm-hmm. Let, let's do her. this, hamster. We got we got this. I just realized I gotta go back to the parasite brown because there's bits of his hands that are just completely unpainted oh, right dear. on the underside. Well, the yeah. nice thing is, is this is like the perfect time to like go back and do your touch-up stuff if you need to. Still mm-hmm. a little bit of time left, so we're good. The irony is, as you were saying that, I was looking on the inside of the ear, having that same problem like, oh, I missed a spot in the ear. <laughs> Speaking of ear, I am going to do a little bit of this on the inside of the ear, like a little dry brushing of the pink, just oh. to give it a little cute little rosy tinge. Maybe I can cheat this and dry brush over the spot that I missed with the brown. Let's yeah. see. It's like inside, if you look at the ears upside down, yeah. um, on its its left ear, like all the way on the inside. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how I even see it, but now that I see it, I can't not see it. Just a nice swath of white. There you go, just a little tinge. Yeah. Did you say uh, a little bit on the inside of the ears there? Yep, Rhea? just a touch, just like that. Hey. <laughs> now, one of those ears might have a little more than a touch, but now there's not a, a spot. Well, there you go. <laughs> right now I'm going to get the palms. Yeah, the palms are the hard part. Oh, yeah. So Flame and Raynar um, asks, do any of you painters happen to use any Vallejo paints, washes, or inks by any chance? Absolutely. Um, These are, I believe. These are all Vallejo. Yeah. Yeah. Let me grab the drink because I'm going to plug the Discord, which is discord.gg slash idle champions, which if you come to, we have an entire channel dedicated to paint and slay. And the pinned post or one of the pinned posts is a list of general supplies to buy that will work for pretty much all of the minis we've been doing. Uh, You know, a couple small exceptions here, there and everywhere. But those are all uh, Vallejo paints and it's just a nice set and some brushes and uh, yeah. They're just good paints. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to be that person, and I really want to try and get a little bit of pink on the lip. Just a touch. Okay. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. This is just me being me. You know what? I'm going to give it a try. I like this idea. Yeah. Yeah, I think it needs it. Yeah. Just a little. I mean, we are in the last uh, eight minutes, so might yeah. as well get in these these exactly. last little, last just that little touch. Yeah, I like it. Okay, cool. So that's the pink, or the rosy flesh, I should say. I'm gonna go back to the elfric, elfic, good grief, <laughs> elfic flesh, <laughs> and I'm just gonna give those eyes like little glints to them, those little beady black eyes, little dots so in tiny there, tiny little dots. Yep, tiny little dots. All right, here we go. This is the moment I need a pin. Yeah, if you want to use your um the toothpick trick, you're more than welcome to. And actually, I'm going to use my daughter. I'm not even sure the toothpick might actually be too big, to be honest. Ah, ow. Elfic no flesh hurting. just bit me. 
<laughs> Has a taste for flesh now. Ugh. Let's see, what do I want to use? I'm going to try using the, the tiniest brush I have. There you go. Just oh, sorry. My hair just got all over the microphone. My bad. No, it didn't sound any. Okay, that's good. Like that. Yeah. Okay, that's not so bad. That's pretty good. There you go. Stay there. Don't move. Let's see if I can get a dot in the same place on the other side. Um, there you go. Well, that's a little more. Yeah, mine got a little. A little more of a. A line the back and forth. Dot. Game. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. They're not exactly in the same place, but now they're both dots. One of them was a oh, line. It was making my hamster look like a lizard. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's not good. <laughs> yeah. That can I be think, a thing. I think I'm actually only going to do it in one eye, as if he's only Ooh. getting hit from by light from one direction. Oh, there you go. Now, I could have left the line and could have just turned this into an eldritch giant space hamster, but we've gone true. for the cute for most of this. this I, feel, I felt like now is not the time there to go are. eldritch horror. I mean, you could. It's always the time to go eldritch horror. Mm -hmm. Especially recently, just out of... Out of the blue, I've done a lot of things recently that were horror-related, even though that is usually not my jam. All very cool things, but... Sorry, I'm fascinated watching V do tiny, tiny little things to the eyes. Do, do. Um, we also had a question about future, uh, future minis. Mm -hmm. Can we expect to see you paint any big figures in the future? Demon princes, dragon lords, dukes of hell, archangels. Um, I don't think we have anything on the listed stuff coming up. Nothing officially coming up. I mean, you and I have talked about a certain um, large silver thing. Yes. That we have. That we're debating. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> To answer your question, yes. Yes. We we because I think the biggest thing that we have painted so far was the adult green dragon. Adult? It was the young adult. Young green young adult. Yeah, the young green yeah. dragon. Young green. Jungren? Jungren? Jungren. 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 The Jurgen dragon. The Jurgen dragon. Jurgen Fergen dragon. All right, Mark, that's my last question for you. What's the largest mini you've painted? Oh, the biggest one I ever did. I think that was uh, one of the young reds, I think. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely a dragon. It was a WizKids dragon for sure. Yeah, we did the uh, young blue together at D&D in a Castle second year. Yes, that's right. That's yeah. uh, when I first learned, when I first met you, as a matter of fact. Yes. Yeah. And uh, subsequently, I did, I don't know, I guess they're about the same size then. They I painted are, that, yeah. you know, all all the dragons in that series, essentially. Oh, so then, yeah, you've gotten them all covered. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Okay, so I think this is where we're going to call it for the day. Yeah. And next we week, are. we'll do base work and pack and chest plate work. But we're making some good progress on our little, our little hamster. I think so. They what look like a hamsters you? to me. They do. Yeah. Gosh, they're too darn cute. Look at this face. You get to boop the snoot. All right. But so not yes. right now because it's still wet. It's still wet. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Wet snoot. Wet snoot. There we go. So now, thank uh, you. I just want I just want yes. you all to note that I'm closing these little paint pots tightly so Good. they're not completely dried out when, mm -hmm. when we gather next week. Or worse, you go to pull them out and they have leaked. Yes. yes. I've, I've had that happen before and it's not fun. So definitely give them a good. Yeah. Swisheroo and close up. Well, not, I'm looking at the brushes. Don't swish them. Uh, close a roo. And then swish your brushes. Make sure you clean those. Yes. That is <laughs> also, that as we another. mentioned. Yep. I'm also quite bad at doing that sometimes. So yeah. Yes. Don't, don't end up with a paintbrush like mine that has just become a stick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't, 
don't do that part. And then, you know, don't forget there's some other cool things happening. Like, you know, you have some very cool skins. The Blushing Bride Nahara. You also have the Blushing br the Groom, uh, Uriah. And Uriah you can get in Idol Champions right now. Right now, mm -hmm. go in and play. Unlock on Uriah the, if you have not yet. During the Grand Rebel until February 13th, I believe, is you're going to be that your last day. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Look at you. Yeah. All set and ready to go. <laughs> and we're lucky enough to have you join us again next week to finish up the hamster, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, we'll see you next week at the same time. All right. I think we'll leave it at that. Have a great weekend, everyone. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.